Why, hello. I didn't see you there. If you live anywhere north of the Pennsylvania line, you'll know that the number one killer of any automobile is rust. Rust can take a decent car and turn it into a piece of garbage in a matter of years. Welcome to Garb Car Garage. All right, so today we're gonna to be addressing three major areas of rust concern on the E46. Rust, rust, and more rust. These are pretty much the most common areas you'll see all of these cars rust out in. There's this panel along the bottom, so we've got a bad spot here. We've got a spot starting here. And the worst of all, the rear corner below the gas door. There is little to nothing left of the lower portion of this. So we're gonna do the best we can to try and fix this up and stop the rust from spreading. We are not professionals and we are not body men. So we're just gonna do the best we can with what we got <clears throat> and try to make this better than what it is. So basically the body work is gonna be broken down into nine essential steps. We're gonna have the access to rust area. So on this vehicle, to get into the bottom, we're gonna have to take the rear bumper off. We're gonna then mask off the other areas to make sure that our grinding down the rust areas, grinding down the paint, doesn't affect the areas that we don't want affected. We'll then be removing all of the rust as best we can. If any rust is remaining after this, it will come back through. So this is the most diligent part of the process. We have to make sure that there's nothing remaining. After that, we'll be treating the bare metal. We'll be putting some chemicals on it, some coats to make sure that if there is any minuscule little bits of rust that couldn't be removed, that they'll be treated and it won't spread through the body work. After that, we'll be applying body filler. We're gonna have to try and build up that area to get those body lines back. Then we'll be shaping it, making sure that everything looks as OE as possible. Applying a glazing putty, making sure that all the imperfections are taken off. We'll be applying paint and primer, and then finishing. We'll be getting the, uh, the clear coat on, sanding it down, and making sure that everything blends together, and then waxing it to make the car look like it was never touched, hopefully. All right, so let's get this thing on the left, get the bumper off and get to it. Okay, so now that we got everything removed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape off the areas. So we're gonna clean the body, clean the surface, make sure the tape's gonna stick and mask off everything so we can grind without damaging anything else. And then from there, we're gonna get to cutting. So just as important, if not more than important than the rust that you can see on the outside, is the rust on the inside of the panels that we're not being able to see that's bleeding through. So what I'm trying to do before we bring this thing outside to finish grinding the exterior rust off is to try and get the rust that's in behind these panels to make sure that once we fix this, fill it back in and build the panel back up, the rust isn't gonna creep through the remaining metal. Okay, so to kind of illustrate how important it is to get behind the surface of the panel, not just on the panel itself. I wanna show you how bad the rust was on that rear quarter, that it actually went through the body and into the trunk. It's just gonna come right back through again, and this repair could last maybe a year, maybe two years. And so if you're not gonna do the inside, just let the car go, because there's really no point in doing it. So we're gonna get this ground out taken care of, uh, then we'll get on to the next step, which is the coatings, and we'll show you what we're gonna use for that in just a second. All right, so for the coating period, we're gonna use a product called POR15 or POR15. 
What uh, POR15 is, is a coating that bonds with the rust itself, locking it in, and it claims that it permanently removes the spread of rust. What this will do is it'll lock all this stuff in and we'll be able to put body filler over top of it. Now, they recommend that it takes 24 hours to dry, but when you're applying body filler, it's supposed to be a little bit tacky. So what we're gonna do is open up this can. We are going to get some brushes out and we're gonna cover all the areas that are bare metal down on with a little bit of PR15. Now, when you are using this product, it is imperative that you cover any bare skin or any clothing that you actually like with some sort of cover because this gets on and never comes off. The last time I got this on my hands, it took about four weeks for it to be removed. Black spots were permanent. Uh, I had it on my face, I got it in my mouth. So today, I'm actually gonna properly gear up to make sure that the PORF 15 stays on the car and not on my clothes. All right, it's five hours later, we're back. There's a horrible windstorm going and my barbecue blew off my back porch, but gotta get this thing finished. So we are going to try and fill in the large hole on that side with Bondo to complete the body lines. Now, because there's absolutely no metal remaining, we have to use these metal patches. Uh, they kind of form over, allows us a base to put the Bondo on. Now, they're supposed to be made of stainless steel and able to be formed very kind of a soft, malleable metal on there. Hopefully we can get them on there, get close to the body lines and not have to put a ton of Bondo on it. So let's get this package open, the patches out, get them cut, formed, and let's start pouring some Bondo. Okay. Don't, Don't even, Bondo. Need, just leave it like that. Lighter, faster, stronger. And the second one. Now this is a larger hole than I would like to have been bondoing. This should probably be welded, but for the sake of the channel, entertainment, and the fact that we don't have a welder at the shop, this is what we're gonna be doing. So we'll try and get this formed up a little bit better. We'll get the bondo mixed up and we'll apply our first skim coat across here. All right, so this panel is starting to get relatively smooth. We're trying to blend it and feather it into the existing body lines. Basically, if you push your finger down here, you don't want to feel a transition. If you do, that will show up heavily in the paint. So we've got the majority of it covered and the shape is starting to come along pretty nicely. But the problem is we still have these divots and holes here. So we're gonna to need to put another coat of Bondo on here, hopefully fill these guys up, build up the bottom, build some strength to it, get back to sanding, and hopefully one more and this thing will be smooth completely out. All right, so we finally got the Bondo to a relative layer of smoothness that I'm happy with it. Is it perfect? No. Definitely. Is it professional? No. Is it good enough for our purposes? Yes. So what we've done is we've cleaned the area off of all of the dirt, debris, sanding dust that you get from sanding things. Uh, we're gonna finish off by kind of giving a little blow, make sure there's no other residual dust sitting anywhere. Then we're gonna mask off the areas that we don't want to paint. 
and we're going to hit it with a coat of primer. Now, when we're doing primer, we don't want harsh lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold the paper over and kind of feathers the paint in. So we're going to give it a couple coats of primer. We're going to let that dry. Then we're going to sand the primer flush and we'll hit it with a couple coats of actual paint and some clear and hopefully it turns out pretty decently. Primer is on. Now we've gone ahead and pre-washed and sanded this fender so the primer is now ready to paint. So what we're gonna do now is Similar to how we did before, we're gonna tape off the areas with that feathering style, but we're gonna go a little bit higher than we did prior. So what we'll do then, once it's all taped off, we'll start hitting it with a very light coat of the black, followed by two or three heavy coats, depending how it's sitting, and then do a coat of clear, and then she'll be good to let her sit, and we'll be on the final steps after that. So let's get this tape on here and get a coat of paint on the car. All right. All right, so we are back. The paint has dried, the clear coat has dried, and because the roof in this building is absolute garbage, something has dripped all over the clear coat and left this nice streaks throughout it. So we are now on to the wet sanding portion, which I'm going to hope will get this jarmel out of the paint. So we're gonna get this panel sprayed down, get the sandpaper, get the sanding, and hopefully this will turn out well. But We'll see. In the interim, to the creamery. All right, so not really the desired finish I was going for. Still see some of the transition lines on it, but at this point, I'm gonna throw wax on it and hope for the best. We've gone this far, keep going. We're gonna apply a little bit of this scratch compound. Ooh, it's got the papers. Yes. Take that guy off. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. A little bit, a little dabble do you on there. And we're gonna just work her into the paint. Not on yet, I'm just kind of spreading her around. That's right. Get her. That's good. Good things. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> oh, that made a mess. <laughs> you gotta keep it touching it. It's all over the door now on the inside. <laughs> As you can tell, he hasn't done this before. All right, so finally, we've got all the bodywork, paint, wax, we've got it cleaned up, ready to show you how the final results came out. So let's go have a look at the car. Now, is this job 100% professional? Absolutely not, but if you're not looking for it, it does look 100% better than it was when we originally got this car. All right, so I think this project turned out pretty good. I'm gonna call this one a success. So it's time for the build breakdown. All right, so as far as difficulty goes on this, I'm gonna call this one, if there is a rating system for it, a B plus. Uh, you need a certain level of patience, a certain level of skill, and a certain amount of time. Now, I had the time and the patience, the skill, uh, it just goes to show if you spend enough time at something, you can get it passable. So we're gonna go with difficulty, B plus, and now let's run down our material list. So 
basic materials we use for this. Sandpaper of varying grits. We had reinforced fiberglass bondo and standard bondo. We had the stainless steel screen for filling in the holes. We had the POR15 for treating the rust. Then we had color match paint, primer, and clear. So we ran a whole total of this at about $292.14. Keeping this one as a relatively inexpensive bill. All right, I wanna thank you guys for taking the time for hanging out with us today, going through the process, watching how this was done. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully I learned something, which I probably didn't. But um, yeah, like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.